Hi everyone, I hope you've had a safe and restful break and are ready to get back into the swing of things with ARC 132. I'm just going to show you a few things in Rhino through this tutorial. So last quarter we used Rhino as a drafting tool and now we will be exploring precision modeling in 3D in Rhino. So the first thing I'm going to do when I open up my Rhino is make sure that my units are in feet. So when I use my dimensions to model my objects, everything is to scale. So I'm going to type in units and we'll see that my drop down is set to feet. So that's good. And then I have my display set in feet and inches. So when I'm modeling an object, I want to make sure that depending on what it is, it's the right dimensions so that as I move forward in my modeling, everything starts to line up and fit together. So first I'm gonna show you how to just make a solid from a curve or a surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a rectangle and I'm gonna have the rectangle be five feet by five feet. So I'm gonna type in those dimensions and you'll see if I go to the distance tool that the rectangle down here matches my five feet by five feet dimension that I entered. So it's important to use these um, dimensions so that we can make models that are to scale and accurate. So I also have my snaps on, which will help me in the future if I need to line something up. And if I'm drawing straight lines, I can also turn my ortho on, but these are all tools that you can use to make sure that you're able to create neat and well-developed geometries. And I'm gonna walk you through a few commands that you're gonna be able to use to model in Rhino. And there's so many different ways that one person could approach modeling something in comparison to another person. So hopefully these tools will give you a set that you can pull from to model um, in a way that matches your workflow. But the most important thing is to make sure that we're modeling accurately because Rhino is a precision modeler, which means we can do things to scale and have them line up properly. And this will just make things easier for you down the road as you start making more complex geometries. You wanna make sure they're clean so that you're able to manipulate them with ease. So with that being said, I just drew a rectangle in my top view as I showed y'all. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna extrude that curve to make a solid. And that solid's gonna be a cube. So now I'm in my 3D space and I'm just gonna type in the command extrude curve. And it's gonna ask me my extrusion distance. I'm gonna put in a distance of five feet and you'll see it will ask me if I want it to be a solid or not. So I can click or unclick that box depending on how I want it, but I want it to be a solid in this case. So I'm just gonna hit enter. And you'll see that my curve is now extruded to create a box that's a solid. Another way that you can do this is by drawing my rectangle that I did earlier. I can make it a planar surface and then I can click on that surface and type in the command extrude surface. And it's gonna ask me my extrusion distance again, type in five feet, and it'll ask me if I want it to be a solid again, which I do. And you'll see that I made a cube. So the first way I made it by extruding the curve, the second way I made it by extruding a surface. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use these tools using a simple geometry, for example, a cube, but all these techniques can be applied to more complex shapes and geometries. So I'm also gonna show you, I just showed you two ways how to make the cube, but one more thing you could do, if you go to this box here and hold over it, you'll see that Rhino has a set of 3D um, objects that you can model. And these are a few that they have available for you to choose one. So another way I can make a box is just by clicking on this box and then putting in my dimensions. <laughs> And now I have a box and I can do the same thing with the sphere, click the center of my sphere, enter my radius of six feet, and now I have a sphere. So those are some quick um, 3D solids that Rhino has as its default and you can play around with those, but you can also create your own solids by using some of the tools I'm gonna to show you next. So the first command I'm gonna go over is the command loft. Loft works by using 
curves and creating a geometry from those curves. So if I type in the command loft, it's going to ask me to select the curves I want to loft. And here I have two rectangles. So I'm going to select the two rectangles, press enter, and then it's going to ask me to adjust the seam. Depending on the shape, you may need to move this around or flip the direction of the arrows. But in this case, I think it should work fine. And then I'm going to press enter and you'll see that it made a geometry between the two initial curves that I had. And you can use this to make some more complex forms. So if I go to these set of curves right here, you can see if I type in the command loft, I can select the curves and it will make a geometry that fits between the curves. And there's this drop down here and depending on how I want my final shape to look, I can adjust this. So say I don't want it to sweep into this curved shape between my curves that were my cross section, I can do straight section. And now you'll see it changes the way the final geometry looks. And then I can hit loft to complete that shape. And it's one surface. And if I wanted to close right here, it says it's an open poly surface. If I wanted to close the poly surface, I can use the command cap. And that's just gonna close the two ends. And now you'll see that it's a closed poly surface. And one thing to remember with loft is that order matters. So the order of the curves makes a difference in my final shape. So say I went in the order of this one, this one, and then this one, it changes the way that my final shape looks. So you wanna make sure you're clicking them in the order that you want the shape to be created. So that's loft. Next, I'm gonna show you sweep. Sweep works similarly with curves where you have a rail and a cross section curve. So there's sweep one and sweep two, and I'll show you the differences between them. But sweep one, you select a rail, and then as you select a cross section curve, it's pretty much gonna take my rail and bring my cross section curve all the way around it, and it'll create my geometry. So in that case, it was only using one rail, but if I go to sweep two, it uses two rails, so if I type in sweep two, it'll ask for the first rail and then the second rail and then my cross section curve. And you'll see that I can start to make some geometries that are a little more complex. Then I can move into another command that's useful for 3D um, solids and that's revolve. So if I have this square and I want to make a shape that it's revolved maybe 45 degrees. I can type in the command revolve. It's gonna ask me the start of my axis and then the end of my axis and then my start angle and my end angle. So if I wanted to do it 45 degrees, I would end right there. And then you'll see that it just took that shape and created a surface by revolving it 45 degrees. And then another command that can be helpful is pipe. So if I have a curve and I wanted to add a thickness to it with a circular cross section, I can just type in the command pipe and it'll ask me for my start radius. So I'm gonna set a start radius of maybe two inches and an end radius of two inches. And you'll see that I have a thickness that's consistent throughout. But if I wanted it to change from one end to the other, I can do the same thing, but my start radius be smaller than my end radius. So I can do an end radius of maybe eight inches. And you'll see that now it tapers down to the two inches from the eight inches. So those are some commands you can use to create shapes. And obviously as you, I showed you these with simple geometries, but you can use these commands to do some pretty powerful things with some more complex geometries, if that's what you wish. Now I'm gonna show you how to manipulate some of your surfaces once you have them built. So the first command I'm gonna show you is explode. So right now I have this cube and it's a closed poly surface, but if I wanted to manipulate just one surface on this cube and I just wanted to select that surface, I can type in the command explode and you'll see that it breaks my cube up into its surfaces. So this can be helpful if you wanna start manipulating um, single surfaces, like I could do scale 1D and now this rectangle could just be until the midpoint. So that's helpful if you wanna manipulate certain surfaces. 
Extract surface is another way that you can select just like one surface on a poly surface. So if I type in the command extract surface, I can select maybe this side face right here. And now the rest of this is still joined, but I can select the surface on its own. And then maybe I'll delete that and say I wanted to add thickness to this shape here. I can use the command offset surface. And depending on the way your direction of your arrows are, that's the way it's gonna add thickness. So I wanna add my thickness going inwards. I'm gonna set in thickness of two inches. And then by doing that, you can see that it added thickness to all my surfaces and created this closed poly surface right here. And another command that you can do something similar um, is shell, which kind of can pretty much um, combines the extract surface and offset surface tools. So if I type in the command shell, it's gonna ask me to remove faces from the poly surface. So let's say I wanna get rid of these three faces. And then it's also gonna ask for a thickness. So if I set a thickness of maybe two inches, then you'll see that it added my thickness and eliminated those faces that I selected. So it kind of does the same thing as extracting a surface and then offsetting that surface. Another command that can be helpful is move face. So if I type in the command move face, it's gonna ask me to select a face. So I'm gonna select this front face here. And then it's gonna ask me a point to move it from. So I'm gonna select this corner and then I'm gonna go until the midpoint. And you'll see now that this shape is sheared in that direction. Trim and split can also be pretty handy when you're working in 3D. So I typically like to use these in a front or top view, not in a 3D view. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. If I go to my top view and I'm trying to trim, say I have this shape right here, this triangle that I wanna take out of this cube. If I select my curve and type in the command trim, then I can select my cutting object, which is the curve, and then select the object I wanna trim. And you'll see if I go back into my 3D view, it has this um, poly surface still together, but the area that I trimmed is now removed. And you can do something similar with split as well. So if I draw my polyline and I want that same triangle, but I don't wanna eliminate that piece that I trimmed earlier, I'm gonna select that curve and type in split. I'm just gonna ask select cutting object, select object you wanna split, cutting object again. And then you'll see that these are now two, three different poly surfaces. And if I go here, I can see in 3D that it split my cube into the lines to follow my curve. And then another few commands that can be helpful is dupe edge. So if I type in dupe edge, it's self-explanatory. It's just gonna take this edge and make a duplicate in a line. So if I were to move this, now we have a line that's the same um, dimension as that edge was. And then there's also dupe face border. So if I select this top surface and I duplicate that border, now I have that um, face border duplicated. And maybe from here, I wanted to extrude that curve. So I can pull up and make another shape above it. So that's one way to use dupe face border. Just get rid of that curve. And then there's also extract iso curves is another, another way to get lines from geometry. So I'm type in extract, let me get rid of this here, extract iso curve. And I'm gonna, it's gonna ask for the surface on extract iso curves from. So I'm gonna select this surface here and then I'll just pull one at the midpoint, maybe one here and here. And you'll see that now I have lines that follow this geometry. So because this is a rectangle, they're just lines. But if I had a more complex geometry, say a cone, I could extract isocurves that were the proper um, circumference of where I am located on the cone. And the command divide is also helpful. So if I type in dupe edge and then I duplicate this edge, 
and then I want to divide that into maybe three segments. I can do that. And then from there, I know this is split up evenly and I can start to bring lines down that are perpendicular. And then maybe I want to trim away this middle surface here so I can do that. Oops, one sec. Maybe I need to explode. And trim. Um, but it works to divide my surface and I can use those dimensions. If I wanted to be more accurate, I could do bedge and then divide into a certain length. So I could do one foot segments for my five foot cube and I can use these points um, as places to start manipulating my geometry. And Merge all coplanar surface can be helpful if you're making a geometry and you have multiple surfaces that are joined together. So here I have these two open surfaces and I'm going to join them. But you'll see that the seam is still there where I joined them. If I type in the command merge all coplanar surfaces, now I have this one surface. So that can be helpful if your geometry starts looking a little messy. If your planes are all cloaked planar, you can type in merge all cloaked planar surfaces and it will combine them into one continuous surface. So those are just a few tools that you can use to create and manipulate your objects in Rhino. And again, one thing you wanna really try to do is make sure you're modeling accurately. So if you're using dimensions, make sure you type in those dimensions and that you're snapping to your points. If you need something to attach to a corner, make sure you're snapping at the end or at a point so that as you move forward, your geometries are developed in a way that's clean and you're able to manipulate them easier. And if you have any questions, you know where to find us at our office hours and thank you.